when a patient gets their genome sequenced, um, it may be for a variety of different reasons. Uh, that individual may have some sort of disease that's suspected to be inherited, so they may be looking for a genetic cause of that disease. Other individuals may get their genome sequenced because they're concerned for risk for disease. So they may want to know if they might have a child with a disorder or if they may develop a later onset disease, developing breast cancer, or suffer from a, a hereditary cardiac disorder like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And some individuals um, may just want to understand their ancestry. So there's a lot of different information in the genome that a patient can learn about themselves. So when we look at a person's genome, we either may look at specific regions that are related to the disease that they may have if they're looking for a specific cause of disease, or we may scan through the genome trying to find variants that other people have said cause disease, and then we find those same variants and then we review the evidence, decide if we believe they actually would cause disease. So there's a, a lot of work that goes into looking at a person's genome and trying to determine if we've found a cause for their disease or if they're at risk for a certain disorder. So in about 1 to 2 percent of individuals that we sequence, we find genetic information that puts them at very high risk for disease, and that information is actionable. Um, and that's really the minimum level, just only looking at a small subset of genes. If we begin to expand that to many other genes, we find information that gives risk for disease in about 15 to 20 percent of the population. However, one of the challenges that we have is that because only patients with existing disease have largely been studied, when we sequence a healthy individual's genome and find what we thought were disease variants, and then we don't see disease in those individuals, we have trouble understanding what their risk is. Because today, for instance, if we sequence a patient's genome and find uh, a breast cancer variant, we can't really say what their chance of developing breast cancer is. We can say they are at risk because that variant has been linked to disease in patients who come in with disease, but we really can't say is it 10% chance, a 50% chance, a 90% chance, because we haven't studied the healthy population. We've mostly studied the disease population. One of the projects that I've been working on over the past few years is called ClinGen, or the Clinical Genome Resource. And this is a, a program that's funded by NIH. And the goal of the program is to really better understand human genetic variation. In a lot of the diseases that we study today, we don't fully understand the variants that cause those diseases. So if a patient gets back a genetic report and there's a variant that is labeled uncertain significance, that's really frustrating for the patients because they want to know, is that variant causing my disease or is it not? Um, and our goal is to help them figure that out. So if they share that variant and their information with our genetic databases and other pa patients that have the same variant or variants in the same gene also share, bringing that knowledge together can help us learn more information that might eventually allow us to interpret their variant and tell them whether it actually causes their disease or not and what else they might expect from their, their condition that they haven't yet observed. Today, we're mainly focusing on those individuals who are more likely to have a rare genetic disorder, but any individual who's had any sort of genetic testing, whether it's a whole genome sequencing test, an exome sequencing test, or maybe they've had their genotype analyzed through a service like 23andMe, all of those individuals that have genetic information and are willing to share it can register on Genome Connect. So for individuals who are interested in getting their genome sequence, it can certainly be ordered as a clinical test today through a physician, although it does, you know, for a healthy individual, it's largely not going to be covered by insurance and you'd likely have to pay out of pocket. And it may range from five to eight thousand dollars for a genome, maybe a little less for an exome, um, but that is available today. 
However, there's also research studies that are recruiting patients into those studies where the cost of the sequencing will be covered by the study. If you or a family member is pregnant anticipating the birth of a child, um, if you have that child at either Brigham Women's Hospital or at Boston Children's Hospital, you would likely be eligible to enroll that baby into the BabySeq study for a potential uh, exome sequencing of that baby. Also in the future, um, they'll soon be opening enrollment for the Precision Medicine Initiative, and that's where families or individuals from across the U.S. will be able to sign up for that study, contribute their health data, as well as um, have whole genome sequencing, uh, and that useful information that's actionable for those individuals will be returned to those patients through the Precision Medicine Initiative.